You really feel like something's not right, and no one really knows what's going on. But today I can tell you my story. I'm Nina Adlon. I'm a mother of six children, owner of two wonderful dogs, opera singer and vocal coach. That's me. It feels like you lie doubled over, unable to breathe, and you just think, help, take me to a doctor. I hadn't been eating well, since opera singers often eat late and also drink late, including alcohol and so on. At some point, I got such a bad stomach pain that I thought, I can't take it anymore. It was, it felt like I was dying. It came from down below up to my heart. And I thought, these are the symptoms of a heart attack or something. The cardiologist said immediately that my heart is absolutely fine, perfect. It's nothing, it's coming from your stomach or from that part of the body. I felt unable to cope anymore. I couldn't find anything at all on the internet. Not really. I was lost in the jungle. It was a horrible situation for me. I had information, misinformation. I had no idea what's going on and wanted to be able to speak to an expert straight away. What do all of these symptoms mean? It could be that you have gastroesophageal reflux disease. The reflux causes the acid from your stomach to rise up to your esophagus and cause an acidic burning sensation. However, the fact that you experience chest pain could also point to a heart-related problem. So it could be a good idea to undergo a series of tests to rule out other diseases that could be causing these symptoms. I would recommend that you stop using the internet for self-diagnosis and instead seek out a specialist that can help you find a solution to your problem and conduct more appropriate diagnostic tests. OK, thanks. You're welcome. Get well soon. I thought, I'm really seriously ill. Waiting with this uncertainty was driving me crazy. And I just wanted clarity. So, what are my treatment options? Well, most patients respond very well to medication, so I'd try that first. You can generally then stop taking them and then only use them when you need them. Some patients need to continue taking medication for their whole lives, and in that case you should consider surgery as an alternative. For some patients, the reflux is hiding a large hiatal hernia, a rupture of the diaphragm. Here, an operation is the better and more effective remedy. In the event that the reflux leads to regurgitation of a lot of fluid, making it impossible to lie down at night or tie one's shoes, an operation is usually the more effective method to eliminate discomfort. This turned out to be correct. I had a hole in my diaphragm as big as an apricot, a small apricot. Then, of course, I took the medication, which sometimes helped and sometimes didn't. Each drug, of course, also has side effects. I didn't read any patient reports or anything like that, because they're always the same, either this, that or the other thing. I always find that difficult. So I asked myself, what do I do now? 
That's when the big search really started. But the pain was so bad that I thought, I just want to go to the hospital. So what are the advantages of having the operation? Well, the biggest advantage of the operation is that you no longer need to take any medication. This is achieved by reconstructing the valve between the esophagus and the stomach, so that all forms of reflux can be blocked again. This is in contrast to medicinal therapy, where some people continue to have symptoms, either because the drugs don't work effectively and the reflux persists because the contents of the stomach remain acidic, or because they have other symptoms of non-acid reflux. The operation simply prevents all of these symptoms by just getting the valve working again. Sometimes the reflux is very acidic, sometimes not. It can sometimes be harmful to your health and sometimes not. The same goes for the ruptures. I knew because the professor had said that it's important to measure the acidity of the rising stomach acid. This is absolutely vital to determining how serious it is. When mine was measuring, it came out green, as poisonously green as it could be. That was the point where it finally became clear to me that I wanted to go down the operation route rather than being put on medication. I just wanted to be able to lead a carefree life again, to play with my kids and do what I want to do. I'd also like to be able to enjoy eating again. So who do I go to? What actually happens during the operation? These days, this operation is minimally invasive. To do this, we use the so-called keyhole method. These are very small trocars or sleeves that we feed through tiny incisions in the abdominal wall. And from there, we can operate. The first step is to bring the lifted stomach back down, which in your case is a bit higher up than it should be really, due to your hiatus hernia or diaphragmatic hernia. We pull it back down and close up the diaphragmatic hernia with stitches. In many cases where the hernia is particularly large, we use an additional supportive material. This means implanting a mesh. Implanting involves laying a mesh on top to reinforce the stitches. The second step is to support the muscle between the esophagus and the stomach, the defective muscle which can no longer prevent liquid from rising up from the stomach. This must either be strengthened or supported in some way. In many cases, this is achieved by wrapping the stomach around it, for example. It's not quite as crazy as it sounds. The stomach is an incredibly flexible organ that can be taken and just wrapped around. This supports the muscle like a valve and prevents fluid from rising. Then we remove the trocars or sleeves and what you're left with is three to five small incisions. And that's it. I woke up in the recovery room and the professor, my hero, and Saviour was immediately at my side again. He said, Ms. Adlon, the operation was a success. Everything went smoothly, the hole is repaired. Then I told him, thank you. From the bottom of my heart, I'll never forget what you've done. I'd found my core again. It was just I could certainly feel the mesh that was in here now, and I could now feel an inner stability here. That feeling was gone. That feeling of not being able to cope. My body felt stable again. Now that I'm better, where do I want to go now? What are the things in my life that really make me feel good? Can I pick up a laundry basket? Can I hold my dogs on a leash again? Can I do sport and all of these things? Those were the questions. And in my case, am I allowed to sing again? Or in what ways can I strain myself? I am passionate about my work. I am passionate about singing. I am passionate about teaching. But what can I do now and what shouldn't I do? Can I really do and eat everything that I love? Well, Nina, 
The reason that you've taken the step of deciding to have an operation is because you can't do the things that you love to do. Um, and for you, the most important problem is that you can't sing. So the whole intention of the treatment, the whole intention of the operation is to improve your quality of life and return you to normal activities. So once you're over the surgery, the overwhelming likelihood is that you will be able to resume all normal activities. You will be able to exercise, you will be able to eat, and most importantly for you, you will be able to sing. So when we say our feet are sane, it won't be forever because hopefully I'll be able to come and listen to you sing at the opera. Wonderful. Thank you. Two or three months after the operation, I could basically do everything I wanted to once again. I could exercise again, I could run again, I could eat everything again. And that's the encouragement I'd like to give everyone, whether or not they're opera singers who want to get back on the stage. After the operation, everything was very quickly possible again. For me, this was my path to a new era, to a new consciousness.